Hi there, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I am going to show you how to make this bullet journal from scratch. So we're going to make the cover, the inside pages, I'm going to show you how to bind the book and uh, we're just going to go through the whole process so stay tuned and I'll show you how to make this 200 page bullet journal with an elastic closure and everything. So here are some supplies that you're going to need. So first I printed off a bullet journal pages and they're printed on both sides. I used um, a higher quality paper for this. The last journal I made was lesser quality so I'm using the Hammer Mill premium color copy paper. I found that markers didn't bleed through it. Uh, Copics still do but most markers didn't bleed through it so we can still use markers. We'll need one piece of 12 by 12 chipboard and a thinner piece of chipboard like a backing board like it's it's very thin. Um, and two sheets of thinner cardstock, and I chose gray for this project. I'm using the Art Glitter Glue, and of course I have my needles and wax thread, paper piercer, and I have this book binding tool. I'll try and leave a link to where you can get this in the description box below. Something to apply glue with. And I bought this uh, faux leather at Timu, I think it is. So I'm going to be using that for the cover and I'll leave a link in the description box below for that. So we're going to take our thicker piece of chipboard and we're going to cut it first down to eight and three quarters of an inch and then we're going to turn it and cut two pieces that are five and three quarters of an inch wide and these are our front and back covers. For the next step, we're going to take the thinner chipboard and we're going to cut it down to eight and three quarters by three inches. So I'm going to cut the three inch piece off first just to save some of the chipboard and then the eight and three quarters. This is going to be our spine. Next we're going to get out our scoreboard and we're going to take our spine piece and we're going to score it at one inch and flip it over and score again at one inch and then the remaining center piece we're going to score every eighth of an inch. This will give us flexibility when we open and close our journal. Now I'm just trying to pre-fold this a little bit just so that it's already bent and it kind of breaks the fibers in the chipboard so that you can, so it already has a flexibility to it. And here's where you can kind of see how the profile is going to look. So we've got all our pieces cut and ready to start making our cover. We're going to be using the art glitter glue and I'm just on the one inch sides of the binding I'm placing the glue and I'm lining up the edge of the chipboard with the first score line, just leaving it 
a little bit under the score line. So I'm just making sure that we've got it all in place. And then I'm going to really burnish it down and make sure we have good adhesion so that it gives strength to our book. If I can find my bone folder, there we go. And yeah, so just making sure it's got good contact. Now we're going to do the same to the other side. And I'm making sure to put glue on all of it and then the edge of the piece where, where it's going to be probably the most likely to let loose. Sorry, this is off camera, but I'm just making sure I've got it all lined up there. And so yeah, we'll go ahead and make sure that's secured down with the bone folder. And there we have the basis of our cover. And I'm just folding it just to, to make sure that it's gonna fold correctly once we have everything on. So now I'm gonna take our, um, I think it's vinyl, but it's embossed vinyl. So we're gonna just size up our, how much we need. So I'm kind of leaving almost an inch on each side. I will trim down the top and bottom yet, as you'll see. So now I'm going to glue this onto the vinyl and I'm going to make sure I have plenty of glue on the whole cover. So I'm just blobbing it on and as I'm kind of doing this I'm realizing I should probably just have like a bowl full of <laughs> adhesive just to brush on. So I'm going to take my sponge brush which I should have had it wet as well so that it actually um, didn't really soak up so much glue. <laughs> so I was having some issues that I felt like I probably don't have enough glue on here so you'll see me um, adding more glue yet too because I don't feel like I have quite enough because you want to have a good coat so that your whole cover doesn't um, bubble up when you fold it. So yeah, here I'm adding a lot more glue and hoping that this is enough. <laughs> so again, I'm brushing it so that we don't have any of those stripey marks on our, that show through the cover. And now we're just gonna adhere it to the center of our vinyl piece. And we're going to make sure it's got very good contact. So I'm trying to press all the spots and then I'm going with my bone folder over everything as well. And I know it's a little bit hard to see with the black vinyl, but I'm just making sure that I'm getting a very good adhesion to the chipboard. I'm just going to bend this just to see how it is moving and it looks good. Nothing's buckling. So now I'm just going to trim off the corners and I'm not going right to the edge. I'm just leaving a little bit of space between the chipboard and the edge of the vinyl. And I'm going to do that on all four sides or four corners. <laughs> and then we're going to start 
gluing our those edges to the inside of our cover so again I'm using lots of glue and I was finding that uh, this vinyl was a little bit waterproof on <laughs> the inside so I had a hard time having the glue actually stick down so so I really have to work with it on this one so get my bone folder and it still wants to pop up so I'm thinking I'd really like to get some book binding glue but uh, I always don't want to buy more things <laughs> so this will work as long as we can get it to adhere and I think binder clips will probably be the thing to hold it although I didn't I don't like that they indent the vinyl a little bit I decided to add more glue because what I had was already drying really quickly so I really gooped it on this time and kind of made a mess of it but yeah, I was still having trouble with it sticking but I was getting glue everywhere <laughs> So I'm noticing that the glue still wasn't wanting to stick so I had to add more binder clips because it just wanted to buckle. I know that once the glue is dried it won't be an issue, it'll be stuck on there for good because this glue has glued metal to, to uh, paper or anything so vinyl should work too, <laughs> even if it is waterproof. <laughs> At least I, I'm thinking that's the reason why, is that it's waterproof. So now we're going to go on to the other side and really putting on the glue too much probably but uh, at least I know now what what I need to do so I'm going to start tacking it down in the center and working my way out I let the sides dry and now we're going to do the ends so I'm applying the glue and then I'm tuck here I forget to tuck in the corners but you'll see me kind of realize it now <laughs> um, tuck in the corners so that they're hidden and then we're just going to adhere this using the clamps and I remove the clamps when it's completely dry and as you can see the sides are sticking quite well now so the glue does work well once it's dry it just needs that extra hold to until it dries and now that it's dry you can see that it's really nice it's got good shape to it and it worked out really good so now we're gonna work on our inside pages so we're gonna make our signatures so I'm just gonna grab my bullet journal pages We're going to count out five sheets and that's going to be one signature. So now we're going to fold each one of these in half and I do like to fold them separately and uh, just so I get that nice crisp fold for each one. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to clean off my space here. My camera keeps wanting to go out of focus. But yeah, I'm just going to fold in half. I'm going to line up the edges as... as uh, exact as I can and just really give it a nice crisp fold. So I'm going to do that to each one.
And now I'm just going to place each one inside of the first one to give our signature. So I have my 10 signatures here ready to go and I've got my bind binding tool and this is a tool that already has all the holes pre-measured for you so you just have to decide how many uh, you want to punch into your paper. So it comes with this blue uh, top piece that is going to hold your paper down and it's got a little bit of a curve that kind of nests right into your crease. So I'm just tightening that up so that it it is really secure and the paper doesn't move. So I'm counting out my spaces. So I want four spaces of the smaller holes. Just and I, I'm keeping in mind that I'm starting when I sew my thread, I'm starting at the bottom and I'm coming up. So that's determining that I end with the thread coming out the bottom as you'll see when we start stitching these together. You can also stitch with a sewing machine that would totally work as well if you don't want to go through this process but I kind of liked the idea of doing this the old-fashioned way like they used to do when they first started making books. Everything was done by hand. I did make a mistake on, on punching the holes in this one. I counted a little bit wrong, so you'll see an extra punched hole right there. So I'm going to continue with the rest of the signatures, doing them exactly the same way. A good way to do this once you've decided where you want your holes to be placed is to take a sharpie or a dry erase marker and just mark the holes that you have are using and that way you can just quickly punch the holes and it'll go a lot faster. And we're going to continue that and do uh, nine more signatures like this with the rest of the paper. So now we are ready to sew the signatures together and I had done this once before and realized I had completely sewn it together the wrong way so I ran out of the wax thread. So here I am trying to find something else that would work. Um, I was kind of disappointed in my choice at the end. But uh, I decided to use embroidery floss and just try and give it some wax. <laughs> so it didn't work out as good, but it still it still sewed it together. But I found it wanted to knot on itself very quickly. So that is what I am doing now. I am just seeing if I have enough here. So I'm going to measure. I have 10 signatures, so I'm going to measure 10 lengths and a little bit. I didn't quite have enough of the first length, so I had a little piece that I'm just going to try and attach later, so we'll see how that goes. This is um, a kind of wax that I received as a gift. Um, it's for hand sewing. It's to coat your thread, so I'm going to use this to see if it helps. Uh, this the smoothness of the thread going through the through the signatures. So I'm just going to run it through here a couple of times.
So now I'm going to take my needle. I have a curved needle and a straight needle. I'm just going to use the straight needle because I am not very experienced with the curved needle. So I know there's a lot of bookmakers that like using the curved needle, but I think I like the straight needle a little bit better. It's always a little tricky to get the, the thread through the eye of the needle. So we're going to start on our first signature and on the folded side we're going to go up through the bottom. I'm going to open I'm going to open up the the signature and I'm going to just start by pushing the needle through all of the papers. I needed to clamp it a little bit because it wanted to go all over the place. And of course these clamps were a little bit too big so so I'll probably change them to smaller ones because I found that this was very awkward trying to use the big clamps and for the rest of the book I will be using smaller ones. So we're gonna pull the thread all the way through and leave a little tail and we're gonna tie that onto the next signature a little bit later. So I'm leaving about that much if you can see that. And then we're going to take our needle. <laughs> Sorry, it's off camera here. It's very hard to try and sew and film at the same time. So I was having a lot of issues with, with trying to keep in the camera's focus. So we're just going to just gonna sew it like you would hand sew anything. And here's where the <laughs> thread started knotting, even though I had waxed it. So I'm spending a lot of time trying to get these knots out and which was very frustrating. So unfortunately I did not have any more wax thread. I really encourage that you use the wax thread for this because it doesn't have that problem. So yeah, we're gonna continue to sew all the way to the end. I decided to place my thumb kind of in the way so that it had less chance to knot, so that seemed to help. I'm going to remove the big clamps before we go further and I'll find the small ones to continue. So there we have our first signature sewn and we're going to make sure everything's tight and we're going to get ready to sew the next signature on. So we're going to grab our signature and we're going to line them up and uh, <laughs> trying to see where to line them up and we're going to grab some small clamps to put on. So I'm grabbing my two signatures and I'm going to line them up and just clamp the middle parts together because I still need to open it up as I'm pulling the thread through. So I'm just going to clamp them like this and, and put the handles down. And so starting from the bottom, we're going to open up the new signature and go down through the, that bottom hole and pull tight and yeah this is where my th my thread is just tangling up so much so again I put my hand in there just to stop it from knotting and then we'll continue to go up in the new signature and we're going to wrap the thread around the first signature's thread. So I'm coming from behind and I'm just catching the thread underneath. And before I sew it into the next hole, we're connecting the two signatures together this way. So we're going to pull that tight 
and then we're going to continue to sew. Again, I'm sorry for having this out of frame so much because it's, it's very hard to sew um, in front of the camera. My camera isn't quite positioned in the best place, so I kind of have to hold it out a little bit. So we're going to go down through that way and then we're going to come up again and it, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to loop one of the threads and of course my thread keeps catching and tying into knots and yeah it's not the best thread so so yeah slip the needle underneath the first signatures thread this is probably where the curved needle is probably better for this part but I still I don't like going through the holes with a curved needle because it wants to come up on itself kind of thing and then we're gonna go down into the next hole and come up through the bottom again and this is where we're going to tie our threads together if I can get this through without it tying into a knot. <laughs> Obviously I didn't wax my thread enough. So yeah, all the way through. So here we're going to tie that little tail that we left behind. Mine got a little bit smaller but I have thin fingers so I can <laughs> I can tie it still. And I'm just taking the clamp off because it's in the way at the moment so trying to stay in camera while I'm doing this <laughs> and yeah I'm just gonna do a double knot and secure it that way so then we're gonna take our next signature and we're gonna do it the same way starting from where we left off and again we're gonna line up the signatures together and clamp Clamp them together with the small clamps. And I'm, I seem to be having a lot of trouble trying to get it to stay aligned while I'm trying to get the clip ready. Do the other side. And I'm clamping the whole, all three signatures together, just leaving the center of the third one open. And we're going to go ahead and start sewing the third signature on. I seem to like working this direction so I just turn turn the book whichever way I'm more comfortable with and again I'm having quite a few issues with my thread I'm just moving very very slowly as to not get knots in and then we're going to go up through here and we're gonna catch the thread of the last signature you're just gonna catch the the one that's next to the signature that you're working on, not all, f all of them. And we're going to continue to go down and up. So the next part we'll, we'll catch the thread again until we get to the end. And here you can see I am forgetting to do that. And I will realize it soon, I think. And I pull it straight. <laughs> So I'm going to just bring it back up and of course I have a knot that I have to undo. <laughs> this thread has was really a pain to work with so so yeah remember to catch the last thread next to it and then continue sewing. And when we get to the end, <laughs> if I can do this without it nodding, when we get to the end here, 
we're going to actually kind of loop it. I wish I was in camera here because <laughs> you can't see what I'm doing. I'm kind of putting my needle between signature one and signature two with the thread. So it's kind of, it's catching there. And then I'm just making a knot, the kind that you would if you were like hand sewing something. So I make a loop and then I twist the thread around it and pull. So then our our sewing is secure from page to page. So I'm going to continue doing that with the rest of the signatures and then we will come back at the end Okay, so here we have the finished binding. Uh, it's a bit of a mess because I did get a knot in one of the threads and I had to pull it through in it. So I had some extra thread that I had to try and try and weave into there. So I forgot to film uh, where I trimmed off the uneven edges off of that. I just did with a knife and just to make all the edges straight and so now I'm gonna clamp this all together to make it really really tight at the very top because we're gonna go in and glue making sure that it's all the signatures are lined up perfectly or as perfect as I could make them anyways. So I'm using the bigger clamps because it will actually fit my whole um, book. And the reason why you see a different binding on there, this is, this is the one that I sewed it wrong, but I still made the book anyways. Uh, so I decided to use this one to show you how to put the glue on. For this part, I'm using a piece of cheesecloth because I don't have any of the book binding mesh that would normally be used. And I'm cutting myself a three inch piece of the cheesecloth. And this is just to, to kind of bind the glue to the paper a little bit better. So I'm just gonna cut a piece off here. And I'm not making it extremely perfect because I can trim off any um, excess later. Cheesecloth is maybe not the best because it is so stretchy and hard to hard to keep it uh, stable. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut it approximately to the length. It, it'll have more stability once it's actually glued down and I can work with it a little bit better once a little piece of it is glued down. So just sort of measuring the length of the book. So now I am going to make sure that's as tight as possible and I'm going to glue, I just realized I <laughs> took the wrong piece. I'm going to glue this first part down just on this side. So I'm going to add some glue along this edge here. I'm not putting too much glue down but enough to hold the cheesecloth in place. And I'm just kind of approximating how far it's gonna come down. Since it's a three inch piece, it's generally an inch of the cheesecloth that I'm putting on this side. It's a very messy process. <laughs> and of course this sponge brush isn't helping. So I'm just using my hands, getting glue all over my hands. And then we're going to add glue first to the entire spine and binding of our pages. I finally decided that I had had enough of the clogged glue tip, so here I am getting a brush and pouring some glue onto, I think, just a piece of cardstock for now. 
And this will just make putting the glue on just that much easier. So I'm just going to brush the glue on, making sure to get a very even coat uh, along all the edges and a little bit in between. I don't want it to like run into the pages because then our pages will stick together. But that's why I'm kind of holding it really tight as I brush it on. I would like one of those book binding clamps that you just stick this edge of the or the whole book in and you just have the the part that you want to glue sticking out and that makes it nice and tight. So then I'm going to take the cheesecloth and just wrap it around I'm, and I'm pulling tight as I do this so that it all holds really nicely. I don't want my book to be loose so the mesh would work much better than the cheesecloth would, but the cheesecloth does have a little bit of strength to it, so it is helping hold it all together. And then I'm just tapping it into the glue because the cheesecloth is, is quite thin, so I'm just going to make sure it's nicely adhered. Trying to stretch and tighten as I go along. And then I'm just grabbing some protection for my table as I uh, do this last little edge piece. And I'm not too worried about uh, uneven edges right now because once it dries, it'll be. Uh, I'll trim that all off. So here I'm just applying the glue to the other side, and it definitely works much nicer with the brush. And I'm not too worried about the paper warping underneath because this is going to be uh, one of the papers that attaches to our inside covers. So most of it will be hidden and it's not really a page that you would use in your journal anyways. So I'm just going over all of the cheesecloth with some glue and I'm going to do that on all sides just to give that extra stability and and make sure that everything is not going to come apart. So I'm just figuring out how I'm going to let this dry. I don't want to sandwich it between anything. So, um, so because I trimmed the edges of the paper, I'm just going to stand it up on edge and let this dry overnight. So now that our um, binding is all dry, I'm going to trim off this extra cheesecloth because we don't need it and it just looks messy anyways. So because the glue is nice and dry, I can actually pull on the cheesecloth and not have to worry about it coming off because it is very secure on there. And it just adds that little bit of fiber to seal everything together. So I'm just testing to see how well it's holding up. It's bending very well. So next we're going to take a piece of ribbon for our bookmark. I think I measured it to be 12 inches or 15 inches, somewhere around there. And I'm going to adhere it to the top of the binding and just making sure that it's long enough to actually go through the pages. So I'm just going to adhere with some glue.
and I just need a thin line of glue for this one and I'm just going to press the ribbon into there and then we're going to let this dry and then we are almost ready to put our covers on but first we'll work with the inside covers just trimming off a few of the cheesecloth threads that are sticking out there So we're just going to set this aside while we work on the elastic closure of the cover. So I'm just going to measure where I want the elastic to come through on the back. And I want to make sure that it's close to or it's even on both sides. So now I'm grabbing my elastic and I just have a, a bunch of, I don't know what thickness it is, it's a little bit wider than an eighth of an inch elastic and I'm just figuring out how much I need to, to um, put it on the book. So I want it slightly smaller than the height of the book and so that way um, it will stretch over it and it won't be too loose. So I'm just going to cut the slots for the elastic to go through here and I'm just cutting about a quarter of an inch in length each slot. I'm not using the best knife here because it's a retractable blade and it keeps wanting to go back into its case. So um, I would definitely choose a different knife for this next time or even just use a hole punch but I wanted it to be tight so that's why it's just a slit and just making sure that I got all the way through the layers I'm gonna use a wide or a wide uh, eyed needle for this next step because I only have slits in the cardstock it's going to be a little bit difficult to get the elastic through so I'm just going to thread a needle and put the elastic through that way and I could have picked even a bigger eyed needle for this one too but I did eventually get it through there So starting on the bottom slit, we're going to put our elastic through and we're going <laughs> to, it's a little bit difficult getting it through but that's okay, I wanted it to be really tight so it doesn't, doesn't slip out. So I'm just really wriggling this needle out. I decided to grab a pliers because my hands were just too slippery to hang on to the needle while pulling <laughs> and that seemed to work really well. So we're going to pull the elastic till you, till you have a good amount left over. I'm going to adjust it a little bit later as well. I had to double check to see which way this was supposed to go. I have another notebook that uh, I have my art journal in and to see how this was supposed to go around here. So <laughs> I did figure it out and so I'm just wrapping it around 
the inside of the book like I would do on the outside when the book is closed. So I'm having difficulty finding <laughs> where my slot is. I had to look up really close to see where it was, so um, I decided again to use the pliers to get it through. But I like it that it is that tight because that means it's gonna it's gonna stay put once we have our inside covers on. So now I'm just adjusting it, and I want it to be a little bit tighter than than what the length is so that it has to stretch. That'll make it hold better. So I'm just gonna grab my inside and just do a little test run. And it is okay, but I think I'll probably make it a little bit tighter. So I think I have it where I want to, and I'm just going to glue these in place for now, just to hold them and to give a little bit extra for when they are tucked underneath the inside covers, because I don't want this to slip out, so this should hold it pretty good. And then I'm just going to do the other one, but I'm going to offset it a little bit so we don't have a lot of bulk. And then we're just going to set that aside to dry while we work on the inside covers. So we're going to take our um, pages and we're going to grab the cardstock. I'm just keeping a piece of chipboard underneath for catching any extra glue. So we've got our pieces of cardstock and we're going to fold them in half like we did the pages. And now we're going to glue the first one onto the front and I'm just going to trim off a little bit of extra cheesecloth here just so it's not sticking out. I have a long way to go when it comes to bookmaking but this is only the second book that I've made like this so bear with me with the mistakes that I'm making and stuff. So, so I'm going to get a brush and we are going to um, put something protective down to catch the adhesive, any extra. So I'm just going to kind of put it in between so that I don't risk gluing the two pages together. And like I did with the cover, I'm going to put a decent amount of glue on this page. And then we're going to brush it so that there are no lines. And I'm just making sure I have a good amount of glue on here. And I especially want to make sure that I catch all the edges because that's the place where you're going to notice it the most if it's adhered to or not. And I want edge to edge glue. So now I'm going to take this piece and it is a little bit finicky with handling a wet gluey page. So I'm going to line this up with our inside pages and I'm just going to adhere that on and just make sure that it's glued on. I'm going to take my bone folder and really burnish it, make sure that the glue spreads out underneath and that there are no bubbles in between. Just like that. And then I noticed I 
it wasn't sticking a little bit on this edge, so I'm just going to add a little bit of glue along here just to give it a little bit of extra adhesion. So now I'm going to do the other side the same way and uh, just protecting the other page and putting lots of glue on. I'm really making sure I've got lots of glue on the edges and once again I'm going to brush. This looks more like what it should look like with a good even coat of glue over the whole thing. I know it's hard for me to put a lot of glue on stuff because I'm just, I don't know, I, I don't like things warping so much but for this particular project you need to have a lot of glue. It actually doesn't warp um, because we're we're attaching it to something very sturdy and and uh, solid. There really is isn't any warping. So again, I'm burnishing out all the air bubbles and making sure that it has good contact with the paper underneath. So I'm gonna put some heavy things on top to have this dry overnight. So we're ready to assemble the cover and the pages. Unfortunately, I thought I had pressed record when I had actually pressed standby, so I didn't get the first part of this video or the first part of this um, adhering the cover to the inside pages but the process is the same for the other side the this part is tricky and here I just realized I had glued it on upside down so I need to move my bookmark but that's an easy fix at least I realized it before I finished it off and couldn't change it. Not that it's the end of the world that the bookmark would have come from the bottom, but um, maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to put something protective in between the inside cover and the rest of the pages just so I don't glue together my book where I don't want it to be glued together. And I'm just applying the glue heavily like I did for attaching it to the book pages. So I'm putting lots of glue on and taking my brush and really spreading it out, making sure to get the edges. This part of the book is probably the trickiest to do because um, it's very hard to line the, the edge of the paper with um, the cover because kinda has to almost stay closed and I'm sorry for my head being in the shot there. Um, I'm trying very hard to figure out how to do this. Now in the future I think I would attach the inside cover to the cover first before I attached it to the pages because I was having a really difficult time ha having this line up straight and evenly around the edge of the cover. So I'm having to get right in there and um, it looks like this isn't going to work, but it does and it works actually quite nicely in the end, but it is very finicky to try and do this this way. You almost have to close the book and I found that if I lined up the 
the edge of the book cover with the paper and stuck that down really good. It was a little bit easier to to get the <laughs> the pages lined up. So now I am really working with it to make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And it did work out in the end. I did get a, a wrinkle or two, but I think I managed to smooth it out. So you almost have to work with the book closed for this part of it. And uh, it, I did manage to succeed. And it seems like the book won't open in the end, but it actually does. I'm just making sure that I've got a really good adhesion to everything and, and that it's all sticking as it should. And I'm also going to put some weights on it to let it dry overnight. I'm going to put some papers in between just so that any glue that might squish out the sides doesn't drip onto our other pages. And we're going to let this dry overnight in a closed state. Once again, I'm just putting some weights on it. And yeah, we'll come back in the morning. Okay, so we're back with our book and now we are just going to trim off where I didn't get it lined up just for my own visual sake. I don't like the gray paper sticking out from the white paper where it's attached. So I'm just going to trim it off just so that it's even. And I'm just using my rotary cutter and a quilt ruler to do this. And just making sure all the overlapping edges are cut. I'm trying to do this at a really strange angle here. <laughs> And we'll do it to the other side, just like we did by lining it up on the straightest part where both papers meet. And so just moving everything out of the way and <laughs> so we can have a look at the finished product. So the elastic goes around quite nicely. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put these metal corners on to the book just to give it a more um, finished look. So we're just going to slip them on and they are kind of going on hard. I decided to get some pliers and a screwdriver to kind of open them up a little bit um, because they were going on a little bit too hard. So we're just going to slip it on and make sure that the corner is lined up. Didn't quite get it loose enough to get on there.
I really like having these for a finished look. It, it just adds that extra touch of, I don't know, professionalism, even though I'm not a professional. So I'm going to take the pliers and I'm just going to clamp them down so that they stay on pretty tight. And I'm just making sure that they're where I want them to be placed. And because it's not a super thick metal, you can you can crimp it back to um, the way it was before I opened them up. There we have the finished corners. I hope you can see that. And uh, we are finished our book. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, and that you've joined along with me. I know it takes some practice to get, to get things to work the way you want them, but I'm quite happy with the way this book turned out. And of course, my daughter snatched it up right away. So I will have to make myself another one. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.